You may kill me, but you may never insult me. Who am I? I'm Kevin Jack Sparrow. Get the truth about movies on the movie show. If he were telling the truth, he wouldn't have told us. <laughs> Tell them, Sparrow. Unless, of course, he knew you wouldn't believe the truth, even if you told it. Mm -hmm. Hello. Joey, it's Ross. I need some help. Help has come your way because you are listening to the movie show. Hello. What is up? This is the movie show on Active FM. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm Sesh. <laughs> and my name's Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, you like you're like in awe right now. I was trying to find short words oh, okay. to try and get you stuck, but you just kept going. Oh, like, oh, damn it, damn it, oh, that's nice. Damn it, damn it, so you had like in for me there. Yeah. I should do the same. So I try to get you. Today. Yes, we have the beginning. Of Batman. Well, I thought you were going to say bat. <laughs> and then then gonna I was going to say man. Man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, Batman Begins. Batman 2005. Begins. 2005. 2005, 2005 yep. film. Christopher Nolan. Quite shocking. Like we promised. Yeah. We did it. And now we end. Uh, and, and it was brilliant. It was, no, it was actually very good. Yeah, it was really, really good. I enjoyed good. it. I don't think... I don't think I've ever watched it. Maybe I have. Maybe no, I don't I think haven't. I've ever watched it. I know I watched The Dark Knight Rises. Yes. But I don't think I watched Batman Begins or The Dark Knight. So it was it was it was interesting. It gave me old movie vibes. <laughs> Oh, As in, it like it was, you could see it was made really? in two thousand and five. Oh, yes, yes, but yes. it wasn't bad. It wasn't like the the some of the. I hope I get this word right. The depictions of the city. So, like, am I right? There's like a rich area, like a rich yes. city. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that, then there's the island. That then there's the island. Mm. The, the, the 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 Gotham looked very good for 2005 yeah, no, the, even the train i was yes. impressed like that whole because i mean that would have definitely been cg yeah but it was good yes, it wasn't was like CG. it wasn't like oh no look at that i i, I, I was disappointed because it's a christopher Nolan. I, I thought maybe there would be more realism so i saw a lot of cg i was like okay he obviously at this point in life he was still like uh, cg yeah but Yes, there's some but other still, good parts. there were elements that could have been CG that weren't CG. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. The, so the, the, the personally, I just believe it was budget constraints. That's why it wasn't. Yeah, well. That's why it was <laughs> CG because it's expensive to do that mm. real. Okay, some it depends. Sometimes they say we did this real because it worked out cheaper than yeah. CG. Other, so it does depend, I suppose, on what you're doing. But yeah. I think in this case, like I know the, yeah. you know. What okay, Liam Neeson's character, you know he invited him to that 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 big thing on the mountain. The shadows. The the, the, the League of Shadows, yeah, like that home training center. That was CG. But now I think in order to build uh, that where it was, that would have I think cost yeah. a lot of money. So I suppose they did May what they could. Maybe what they did is that they had to decide, um um because you'll see later on the actual city got them um, how they actually did it, and maybe they were just sort of like, okay, look, that's that that's sort of a percentage of the movie. It's, it's the juice is not really with the squeeze. Let's keep focus here. Do this thing. Get everybody here working, focused on this thing. We'll we'll throw that sort of stuff in, you know, as best as we can. But yeah, uh, yeah, because for me, uh, Christopher Nolan is a guy who says, no, let's really do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, as we find out in in our later, you know the more late films that he sort of film does after that he bring directs directs produced a direct brings out yes releases that he makes. releases after <laughs> after that is I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the other there's two others right yes i'm actually looking forward to the other two i think I, I, now i am i think especially i'm looking forward to the next one because it has heath ledger in it with his oh is that the next one already? yeah that's because you know at the end there's when is forever um, when is batman forever is that the no batman one? um so the next one is dark knight rises yes. that's with the joker right sorry the next one is the dark knight yes that's with the joker oh, yes and then the the third one is the dark knight rises ah, okay. yes All right, and the I second see. one's with heath ledger as the joker yes fun fact do you know that heath ledger auditioned as batman and Christopher Nolan was like, ee, 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 it's just not right. And Heath Ledger was like, okay, fine. But as soon as they had the Joker as one of the characters, Heath Ledger was like, sign me up. And yes, yeah. yeah. Chris, uh, 
Christian Bale was <gasps> he was really such good. A good actor. But he is a good actor. He I mean, is. we know he's a good actor. Like Ford I, versus Ferrari, I he just was never brilliant. Picked, I was trying to get him as Batman because uh, the the first Batman I watched was with uh, what's his name, Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. And that wait, wasn't Jack Nicholson the Joker? The Joe, yes, he was the Joker. Yeah. And who was Batman? Was it Michael Keaton? Yes. Okay, yeah. So that's the one that I was. And yeah. you know that there were there were, there were parts in this film that uh, th- there was there was like a riff, almost like a remake. Re- yeah. Yes. And and didn't Tim Burton direct those? I don't know who directed. That. I think it was Tim Burton because I know I really, read a fact eh? somewhere that when this film came out, Tim Burton and Michael Keaton both said they were impressed. What do you call that? What was that? Batman? What Batman back in the day? Or Batman? <laughs> OG Batman. I how don't do know. We, how do we get <laughs> Tim Burton Batman? How do we get to that Batman? Okay, Batman movies. I think it's it's, it's mm. the wasn't that the okay no I think there's been so many there versions has, of Batman there, it's it's hard there, to say which is which really really but yes. Tim. They they said that they actually were yep. impressed, which is pretty that that's something, especially for Tim Burton to say that he was impressed. I think that 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 is really cool. Tim Burton's Batman was nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, called Batman. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Just Google Batman. Starring Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was it. Uh, and then yeah, so the actors. The actors right now are shocked. Do you know I was shocked? Who? <laughs> Gary Oldman. Where? We know him. Excuse my stupidness. Yeah, where do we know him? I, I played, saw his name. I yes. saw him and I was like... Mm, I know this guy. Why do I know this guy? He played Churchill in Darkest Hour. <laughs> there you go. Do you know who he was? The cop. The good cop. Gordon. No. Yes. No. I was like, what? Because I was still like, when I heard Gary Oldman, I was like, wait, who did he play? I don't remember seeing him. But he him. looked like way older, exactly. smaller. Was it just because he's younger? <laughs> yeah. But he was cool. I liked his character. He was I so really liked good. his character. C- can I ask you something? You know, we spoke about this in Tenant. We spoke about the the actors being a bit like, there's not much depth to him. No, they were, they was, there was depth. Did in you find that with us? I, f- I found it at the same level. Really? I, I think it, it it has to be a Christopher Nolan thing. You, you don't you don't get to I feel like Batman no, uh, I feel like there was a lot of depth with Batman himself, so Bruce Wayne, because of the young right. and the father. Yeah. There was a lot more But there wasn't a there, there were okay. Because Christopher Nolan has the tendency of telling an event without going into the backstory. Like Dunkirk, yeah. you just went on a journey with these, these dudes events. in the army. Yeah, it's mm. event based. You it's didn't know it. their mother, you didn't know their brother, you didn't know their sister. Half time ta- half the time you didn't even know their name, but you were going on this journey yeah. with them. Same with Tenant. <laughs> the protagonist man he didn't even <laughs> in that one he was like hey don't go look for a name we'll just call him the protagonist <laughs> like so i think there was a bit more depth yeah. and also like we said previously christopher nolan has a thing for telling events in certain order orders this one it was pretty straightforward from beginning yeah to the end and it obviously it came now and then it would sort of go back in yeah time. it kind of jumped between mm. his childhood and present but it wasn't much yeah. it was more like just I really found this such a good the way that it was told such a good film in terms of I mean you you really felt that Batman begins yeah like you really got like, it was a good origin story you understood yeah. where he comes from the type of guy he was but Christian Bale, my good, I, I was just like, wait, this guy's bad. I'm not because I'm, I'm expecting that. What, what do you say his name is? Michael, Michael Keaton. Yeah. That, and the, the way he got the low voice, even I was just like, oh my goodness! Like, and do you know? So it was actually quite crazy because he's never done like a lot of, you know, like the because in order to do that, you actually have to have quite good like voice technique. Yeah. And there, there We're is. Going over there. Do you know he lost his voice during filming? Oh. Like I think three times he lost also, his voice. Yeah, I was also. I would, every time he spoke, like. Rrr. He so he lost his voice mm. three times during filming after altering his voice while playing Batman. Can I ask a question though? Why the voice change? It's Batman. Is it, that why? It's a Batman thing. Because yeah. I was like, this is weird. Why does he it sound? It is. Sick? It's a Batman thing. So is it part of the like the whole theatrical disguise? I, yeah, definitely. Like he becomes the he's, Batman. Yeah, you know. Because his voice is deep. I was still wondering, yeah. like, what is, is your that business him? Business dealings with? Okay, gone. But apparently, at, at, because he lost his voice, it must have been him. It was good. There was even the one part where he was like shouting. Yeah. 
you know when he was in need he's like help, help. yo i was just like <laughs> ah, wakes up the you. next day no voice okay guys we can't yeah. we can't film today we actually had a funny experience like that although our person so we, so we filmed a movie and one day one of the actresses wasn't even a guy it was a girl she came on set and her voice was gone and i was still like what did you do with your voice like but luckily first uh, of all her character yes. had a bandana over her mouth the whole film so that kind of helped and second of all we already knew we had to re-record adr because the filming location was just too noisy. So we already knew we were up for ADR like from the beginning. So we were kind of like, okay, cool, whatever. Just, you know, say the lines out loud. If the other cast can't hear you, then we'll just get someone to shout the, the line for you. But yeah, I suppose in this case, it wasn't like that. Because I mean, Batman, the one, pa- the one place of his face that shows is his mouth. So you're like, yeah. kind of like stuffed. Yeah, it's, it's the opposite way around. Yeah. So the budget for the film was 150 million US dollars, which is quite a, a good budget, especially in 2005. Box office was 373.6 million US dollars, so they 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 more than doubled. Yeah. And it took them 129 days to shoot this film. 129 days. days. 36912, that's like 3 months. Just over three months what? of filming, and you know that it, it it took them ten months to prepare the the set. That, I can believe it because I mean, the sets were crazy. That's like buying something online for twenty rand and it costs you one hundred and fifty rand shipping. That is true. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, look, the the the, man, the money's worth. But that that that's that's, that's cr- and Christopher Nolan doesn't believe in second unit. He's all for watching every and being involved first in everything so and only units. yeah that was first unit 129 days with Christopher Nolan overseeing everything every piece every shot everything which is yeah which is crazy so just some interesting facts although Christian Bale performed many of his own stunts in fact what they actually did was Christian Bale uh, they would film the fight scenes with the actors doing as much of the fight as possible and then they would do a second take with the stuntman doing it obviously just for coverage but they said with Liam Neeson and with Christian Bale most of it was actually them they didn't have to get the they obviously would film the stuntman Mm. just for coverage but it was mainly just the two of them except he was not allowed anywhere near the Batmobile. What? Yeah, they had a stunt driver. So all the all the shots of the Batmobile was done by a stunt driver. He was not allowed near the Batmobile. I wonder. But I, because I think that car was so... I mean, th- I don't think it, it would be easy to, to make that car. They had five Batmobiles made for the film. Four of them were, were destroyed during filming. Yeah. But it's also because with the car, like, I don't think... I don't think anything was CG with the car because no. they, 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 they even said that when they filmed it, the car was going yeah. the speed that you see it in the, fo- the, the I movie. Was, I was very surprised with that when I saw a lot of the, 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 the BTS, the behind yeah. the scenes, um, especially because like uh, the one car chase, they're going up the building. Mm. Then on top, they're like almost skid- skidding across. Mm. Uh, and then ramping and jumping. All the ramping and all that. All of that was, was, was real. On set, but with the, with the actual car on set. Yeah. Even, you know, there was the one part where he ramps off and he drives through like a block of concrete you and know, obviously smashes through it. There's one there's one thing that, that I really, really thought about. It was driving on rooftops, you remember, with yes. the tiles. Yeah. Is that even possible? Because if you've ever been in a roof, it's it's your wooden yeah, um, it uh, thing and it's your tiles. tiles yeah. They obviously That's must a, have built. They must no, have no, they would have enforced yeah. it and whatever. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, uh, w- w- would a roof hold a car? Uh, m- maybe, and then I thought, m- on maybe it's the momentum that it has already, the, the speed that it's going. But I was just like, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But that concrete part, they mm. that that was real as well. They literally drove like the, through the. They drove it through the the <laughs> the stunt driver didn't want to do that stunt. He was like, "Oh, let's not put the car." Not even himself. He's like, "Let's not put the car through that. Let's not do that to the <laughs> car." He said afterwards, like there was a few scratches, and I think one of the windows broke. But he said, "Like we're good to go now. Like they fixed it up." Let's and continue. Yeah. So that was that was crazy. Sure. Also, Christian Bale's 
active dislike of his uncomfortable Batman outfit. Apparently, it was so uncomfortable. He said it was hot and it gave him a headache and it was hard to breathe in and everything. But it helped his performance as the Dark Knight as he was perpetually in a foul mood when wearing it. Ah. So, <laughs> kind of helped him be mad. Just no wonder he was why he like, changed. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I was, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't think Christian Bell had it, had it in him to be like. I mean, he can do a lot of actors, but and did you see how buff he was? He must have buffed himself. No, up. it's actually crazy. So it's actually crazy. So Christian Bale before this in two thousand and four was in a film called The Mechanist, right? And he was very underweight for this film. So he was about one hundred and twenty pounds on his six foot frame, right? When he was under consideration for the parts. Obviously, he realized, look, I need to, you know, shape up type of thing because Buckle I'm currently up. underweight. Yeah. So after being cast, he was told um, to become as big as he could be by Christopher Nolan. So Christopher Nolan says to him, become as big as you could be. Yeah. Bale underwent. Now, I don't know if you remember this. We once did a show a long yes. time ago about about actors, mm. like uh, their the way. And cr- I remember Christian Bale seeing him under, and it the was Fat scary. guy, right? It was yes, the fat guy. He, he went fat, like yeah. fat, fat, but then he also went, I don't know, I think it must have yes, been for this film when he was right. underweight. And he was, he was underweight. Yeah. So now Christian Bale, first of all, the fact that he he just does this to his body is actually like quite amazing. But he underwent a six month dietary and exercise regime and ended up weighing about 220 pounds, about 40 pounds above his normal weight. So he went from being 120 pounds to 220 pounds. So he literally gained 100 pounds. And then it was decided that he'd become too large. Friends of his and the um, the movie's crew dubbed him Fat Man instead of Batman. And so he quickly shed about 20 pounds to have a leaner, more muscular frame now sitting around 200 pounds Bale described the experience as an unbearable physical ordeal okay so 220 pounds is 99 kilograms kilos so and before the 160 pounds because he went from 60 is 72 so he went from 72 kilograms to 99 kilograms yeah that is crazy that is that is just great. But also, I respect um, Christian Bale because he's a method actor. And what yep. a method actor does is they stay in character. Do you know that he even stayed, uh, you, he kept on using an American accent in interviews. I heard. The, I heard. And apparently it's something yeah. he does. So whatever accents he uses in the film, in interviews afterwards, he'll continue using that accent. Accent. He is Welsh. So he obviously has that accent. He's Welsh. Yeah. But he, I thought it was just like plain English. No, like, he's Welsh. Is it? Mm. But he doesn't use... So in if you watch interviews, he has an American accent in interviews for this film. Yeah. Because it's just part of his method acting staying, style. Staying within the accent. Right? Which I think is pretty cool. I, I respect method actors. Yeah. I think maybe sometimes sometimes it's a little bit... Like Heath Ledger, <sighs> that, that cost him his life. Which I'm just like, that's not worth it. Like, you know, I, your I, life's more important than a role. I was actually thinking to myself, I, I wonder what, um, what, what, what Christopher Nolan's reaction or how he must have felt after hearing that. No, you know, he. <laughs> Everyone on this film must he have committed been suicide. I mean, I mean, how easy is it for you to like blame yourself, to sit there and oh, flip? I, I think I killed an actor. You yeah. know, what, what, sure, what have I done? Flip, you know? eh. To, to like go under like a de- depression or something like that, or maybe it was just like, huh? well, I didn't have to go that far, <laughs> but he went that far. But I think, yeah, I don't think he did. T- I think directors don't tell actors how to get into character. I think mm. they just like set an expectation. Look, we need someone, yeah. the Joker. He's and sometimes they'll say, like in this case, he said mm. to Christopher Nolan, "You need to, you need to get as big as you can." Mm. I know in um, a Beautiful Boy with Timothy Chalamet, they told him you need to get skinny, and he was like, "What? I'm already skinny." But he was obviously playing. Being a drug addict, so they were like, "No, you need to, you know, you we need to look see your like bones. You're, not, yeah, you're not eating; you're mm. only taking drugs. That's what you need to look like." So I think in those cases, mm. they they like step in, but yeah, sure, yeah, it's it, it's quite crazy. Writer and director Christopher Nolan is reputed. This is funny to have been so fascinated with Killian Murphy's bright blue eyes that he kept trying to find reason and ways to have Crane remove his glasses. <laughs> What serious? Yeah, but I mean, Killian Murphy's eyes he are is. like like he has the most striking eyes. 
I think you know th- there's something that that uh, whenever I swear I'm like there's just something off about this guy. <laughs> there's just something. I, His I eyes are just and, too. And maybe it is that. It's the but, eyes. You know the minute because I, I was watching them with with my wife and uh, he's Irish. Oh my goodness. He is Irish. And the minute I saw the minute we saw him, I was like, oh yeah, 2005. I was like, um, so Smallville. What wh- when was Smallville recorded? Because in Smallville there's. Is, I haven't watched Smallville. There's no hair. He doesn't have hair. Yeah. Kenny Murphy doesn't have hair. Let, let me just, uh, uh, we might have had this conversation already. Maybe I I, I, I don't think I miss. Kenny what, what Murphy was in A Quiet Place 2. Yeah, I, I remember him in. in yes. He was the the new dude. <laughs> I don't know what to word it. But yeah, apparently. So Killian Murphy's, remember last week we spoke about Christopher Nolan's next film that he's bringing out? Yes. Killian Murphy's playing the the lead but i must be honest for a villain i feel like he had very low screen time but then again like was he the main villain yeah not really but he was quite okay he he sorry he he wasn't bold he wasn't bold in smallville but he he is in smallville yeah he definitely definitely is there because i feel like liam neeson was the main villain. You know, I knew he was going to come back. When he left him, I'm like, dude, don't leave him. Oh, I, don't I, leave him. I must be honest. I didn't see that coming. Serious. I Look, was, I was like, I didn't oh, know flip. Because they kept talking about some other guy. Oh. There's, there's some higher... Pa- and I, didn't, I wasn't expecting it to be him. I, for me, I was just like, okay, that guy over, it's finished. When they said doesn't matter. the bad guy's name, Rahul something... I apologize to all Batman fans that I don't know his name. But that, that dude, because that turned out to be Liam Neeson, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh! So that I, they, they caught me. Are you sure Killian Murphy was in Smallville? That's what I'm looking at. I don't like, think he was in Smallville. I uh, don't. Now, now I doubt myself too. I know Killian Murphy from. I think Peaky a lot of Blinders. our listeners are saying, "Dude, what are you thinking? <laughs> what are you saying?" But also, I mean, Killian Murphy acted in Inception. He acted in Dunkirk. But obviously, where, Batman. Where do I know him from? From like a much, a much older. No, okay, I, I am thinking of someone else. But anyway, when I get the series that I keep thinking of this guy. Then you'll in that film, you'll be like, ah, oh, I pops found up it. In the, in the history of Active FM, it will come up, and I'll be like, yes, I remember, I remember him from. And then you'll say, it. but it's not Smallville. Yeah. Also, I think filming was hectic, as in, like, it was. I mean, it must have been 129 days of just like action and everything. You know, the scene after Batman gets. You know, they release the toxin, that toxic thing on him. Yeah. And then he sleeps for two days. And then when he wakes up, obviously uh, yeah. Michael Caine is there. And yeah. then Morgan Freeman's character comes in. Do you know that he actually fell asleep? So he was on the bed and he actually fell asleep. Uh. And when he woke up, he well, he woke up to, to Michael Caine poking his ribs saying, look at that, he's fallen asleep. <laughs> so that like, he actually fell asleep there. So I think like... Yeah, no, full Must have been intense. hectic for him. Yeah. So when he woke up, he was really in, in the, you know, feeling a bit like... Like really like... like okay. Uh, wow. Like his brain is still buzzing, buzzing mm-hmm. a bit there. And then while shooting on the streets of Chicago, a person accidentally crashed into the Batmobile. Oh, is it, that was probably one of the four. Right. <laughs> Apparently the driver was drunk and he said he hit the car in a state of panic, believing that the Dark Knight's vehicle was an invading alien space craft. What? <laughs> I'm like, how did he get on set? How did, he, they, how did he get there? That's what I'm thinking. So, so surely they would have seen something. I, I think they missed the street or maybe it was a garage or something or an underground or yeah, something. Yeah. How did you find the scene... When they were fighting on ice, the, you know the lake. Um, I thought the sound effects were really cool. Yeah, also like th- that was. You kept hearing the ice. The ice, like you like, hey. but also apparently when Christian Bale and Liam Neeson were fighting on the frozen lake, they could hear the ice cracking beneath, and the next day the lake was completely melted. Oh, uh, there you go. How so hectic really, is so it that? It really was melting. Away. Yeah. I wonder if they knew or if yeah. that was like, oh, flip, oops. I'm glad we got that all done yesterday because yeah. otherwise. Because if you drop in there. Oh, no, you did. Mm. There's very, there's very well, good that chance. Well, that, that, that'd have to get you warmed up pretty quickly. That mm. would be a shock to your system, I think. 
No, it definitely. Yeah, no, it definitely would. Also, the bats. So the bats in the film. I was also wondering this while watching because, like, I was like, Christopher Nolan, he doesn't like doing CG. So apparently, when when a bat, one or two bats were in a scene, like you know, there was that one part where the bats kept coming in the house, and then they still uh, commented, there you and go. Said, "Oh, these these." That was apparently an uh, actual bat because yeah, they could control it. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but when when the bats were like swarming and that in scenes, they decided they opted to do CG and the reason was because they they realized it would be very difficult to control that many bats at once and I also think it would be traumatizing to the bats themselves imagine trying to get all all those bats uh, to because if you saw them they 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 float in in a direction yeah Mm. so it was so cool because didn't at one point didn't they make the shape of the Batman symbol I'm pretty sure they I missed that I think it was in the beginning Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Now, going back to Gary Oldman, right? So he agreed to play Jim Gordon, who was the cop, without even reading the script. So, like, literally, he didn't even read the what? script. He agreed to doing the role and hadn't read the script. So he didn't know what was happening. He didn't know what he was going to do. He agreed to the role. And he was the last actor cast. And he learned his lines on the flight to his first location. Why? <laughs> I think, I think he might, might have been cast late, and it was kind of like a. And he really did l- seem a, a bit lost. Do you think so? Yeah. Like, he didn't have a. Uh, he, he wasn't. Sh- he didn't seem sure of himself. I feel that's like it added to the character, though. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because so he kind of. Because Batman never reveals his true identity to yeah. him. So he's kind of like working with this guy. He doesn't really know who he is, doesn't there's know how to contact him. So there is like mystery to it. Because he was sort of like a corrupt cop, right? And then Batman No, no, no. Came. he was always good cop. So he was always the good cop. Because even okay. in the beginning of the film, you remember when the parents die, he's sitting in the police station and then the cop comes up to him. Oh, yes, it was you're him, right. Which I liked how they linked the two I thought that was up. really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, because obviously Batman is is like in a, you know, what do they call them? Uh, someone who's going around killing the bad guys in the city, but staying under a vigil- vigilante. Yes, that's it. Yeah. And I, I noticed how in the beginning how the cops, because usually like when something like that happens, you know, it's, the cops are always like, "Sorry, kid, nothing we can do." But it, it was, I, I really got the feeling like the cops were on his side, because yeah. it was immediately like, I mean, even put the jacket around the boy yeah. and he was like don't worry kid we got him yeah. so I was like ah so Batman's on the cop side so you see that's why because he's he's a good guy but then he ends up he's a good guy <laughs> <laughs> he goes you know? all all crazy I must be honest though there were times in the movie where I was like wait well, why did we do that why why I don't know if you felt that like that part with the kid like it was such a short scene it uh, must have been like 30 seconds in length and then afterwards when they brought the kid back I was like oh okay so that's why they did that but you know when you're like did you just bring in a kid so that he could give him like one of his weapons to make him feel like the nice guy for like uh, do you yes. get what I'm saying like uh, yes. there were certain parts I was just like wait what yeah. what yeah no that is true like the kid I was like I was also like okay what now what and yeah. even at the end when Katie Holmes what was her character's name uh, Rachel when she says to him, yeah, she basically said like the man I loved never came back. Yeah, it's like okay. So I was like, wait, are you breaking up with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then they walked holding hands. I was like, okay, no, wait. I was like, okay, not. okay, good. And then she left. And then he, <laughs> you know, for me, what was weird at the end was she'd walk and then he'd say something. She'd stop, smile, say one line, and then walk again. And then he'd say something back. Then she'd stop, turn around, smile, say. I was just like, what is happening? <laughs> you know where I know her from? Where uh, Dawson's Creek. I must be honest, I don't know her very well. I know her, and she was obviously married to Tom Cruise at the yeah. time. So, like, I think at the premiere, because I saw a photo at the premiere with Tom Cruise, but she's not... Where is she? No, I don't know. I haven't seen her for ages. Well, uh, movies and TV shows, The Secret Dare to Something. No. The Secret Dare to Dream. That's 2020. I what? That. First Daughter, 2004, Batman Begins, 2005, Dawson's Creek, 98 to I just know from Dawson's Creek. And the way that she acted in this film... Is the way she acted in Dawson's but Creek. But the, 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 the lover part, not the 
uh, just as pot. Just oh, the, okay. like the way she sp- the smile, the way she, I was just like Dawson's Creek. <laughs> I'm as well as, you know what they're doing nowadays? The woman in the film fight. <laughs> I don't know how to word this better. They're like, I don't need a man to save me. Do you understand All what right. I'm saying? Whereas this movie, it was like back in the old day, damsel in distress. Yeah, she was, she was what, what women can do without any superpowers type of thing. All right. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she wasn't Wonder Woman. So you're saying how she was like, well, some of us have a job to do. And then yeah. she was all like... Ee. She was brave. She was the threat to even like the most dangerous... No, but ape. what I'm saying is she couldn't save herself. So she was brave, but she was stuffed. So without Batman, she was dead. Yeah. No, type without of thing. Batman, there like, was going to be a problem. Yeah, there was no like... She was feisty, but... Yeah... Do you get what I'm saying? Like she yeah. was feisty, but like that was. Well, she still needed. But Batman's I feel help. like her cap. This is where like I think the deepest character development was Batman or Bruce Wayne. Let me put it like that. Yeah. The rest of the characters had that Christopher Nolan shallow feel. That's to what them. I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Who I was your favorite character? Uh, Batman. Definitely. For real? Yeah. Do you know who my favorite character was? Who? The butler, Michael Caine. Oh, uh, yes. He was the only one who he's made good, jokes. He's a good actor. Hey? No, he's a very Even good actor. Even like the, 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 f- the, like the fierceness on his face whenever he spoke about, um, about Batman's father. Yes. You know, while he fought for, you know, yeah. there was just this like, Ugh, No, he know. was proper. Yeah. He really was and proper. I don't know if you noticed, but um, in the two different uh, age differences, like when they went back when you were small, younger and that, uh, his face changed. He looked younger. Really? Michael I didn't Caine. actually pick that up. Yeah. Uh, uh, not like a heck lot, di- but I, I definitely, because at first I was still like, oh, look how young he is. And then uh, when to present time, I was like, okay, well, there you go. There. All right. Well, that explains So what did they everything. do? Some, do you think it was ma- special effects makeup or Who? do you think it was? Christopher Nolan. Special effects, ma- what? No, as in makeup, nah. not not visually effects. Most probably. You know, special effects. Yeah, you you can hide a lot of wrinkles and stuff like that. Or do you think they added wrinkles? I feel like it's easier to add. Uh, yeah, that that's also... Look, at, I suppose... <laughs> or, or he told him to go on a very strict skin routine five months prior <laughs> to filming. You, I, want, I want all of those wrinkles. Apply some vitamin E. <laughs> rub some <laughs> of Nivea, those stuff in there. Dove. There like, you go. There's Michael Caine doing a Nivea <laughs> ad. <laughs> Batman forever. <laughs> I always like to say the skin is... <laughs> no, I, honestly, he was my favorite character. Yeah. And I think it's also because of the... Like DC, this is this is my take. I like Marvel because of the humor. Like Marvel films, it doesn't matter how dark it may be. Yeah. Someone will still shed a joke type of yes. thing, which I really love. In the like, midst of, of, of whatever. Yeah. yeah Whereas sure. DC doesn't really do that. Like it's more like dark. No, like that's... Hell. I feel like DC is a man's... Um, Superhero movie, yeah, because it's it's like beyond. Like uh, in in this film, what I find what and and I find it, uh, Christopher Nolan does it often. The action pieces are very quick mm. and very they they're very cut. It's not very. If you see the fights, they're not detailed. Yeah, no, they weren't detailed. You just sort no. of see, you just see punches, things flying, and you could get obviously the different angles. Which I kind of appreciate because sometimes like fight scenes can get a bit... It's showy. It's very showy. Yeah. And you're just like, okay. And then some of them you're like, oh! And then... Oh, like, but they're especially still if fighting. the sound effects are good. And they keep going... Dish, 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 like you should have been dead five punches ago. But with him, like it's it's the, the story's going. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're not losing the, the, the weight of the fight and how much damage it's doing or what, you know, what's happening. So I, I like Christopher Nolan's fights. Mm. They... They're awesome. But something that really grabbed me about this film was basically the fact... So, first of all, uh, it's obviously written by, by, by Christopher Nolan, but, but yeah. also by a guy called David Samuel. Um, and this guy is basically a filmmaker. He's a novelist and also a comic book writer. Oh, this wow. guy was also involved in writing for Nick Fury, uh, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., also uh, the Blade trilogy. And then... Um, As in Blade Runner? Uh, no, well... How many films were what was in Blade Runner? I also thought that. I know there's the new but one. But then I also know there's Blade, the the vampire dude, the Daywalker. Oh. So I, as far as I know, it's it, it it's basically that, and then obviously Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight trilogy. So it was basically written. I can imagine how this guy would have brought in a lot of the like DC comic. Yeah. You know, no, you, 
you need to get Batman's belt because that's like you know cause, I mean especially like the Batman's um, superpowers is number one that he's rich yeah it's like number Iron two Man. that he's got a lot of the gear and stuff like and it's always that like metal and dish and the mm. body armor you know what was interesting apparently most of his weapons were based on actual like military Comic. no but like actual military like actual things. weapons yeah so stuff that they can really do like stuff that military really use yeah which I was like okay that's cool because sometimes you're just like <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I mean, what does he do? He he's obviously got those little bat um You see that's the thing things that fly. Like Iron Man is in a he's in like a, a mechanical robot suit, so they can yeah. get away with a lot more things because yeah. like like he's flying. Okay, yeah, but he's got like like okay, I don't know that in reality how well his suit would go down. But in the movie you're like you accept it because of the suit. Yeah. Whereas Batman doesn't have a suit. He's got armor and he's got weapons yeah. and then he's got that material that Strong material takes the shape of whatever, and you can take um, punches, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and falls. <laughs> and then, like, but like sometimes when he flies, you're like, that's why with his voice, I was is like, why is his voice he's different? Not flying, he's gliding. Oh, <laughs> but like he's that's why. the wind. Because like remember, <laughs> Spider Man, he had the the not was it stealth mode? No, it was. Or, or, there was one of those modes where it would disguise his voice. And then, do you remember, as in the new, 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 new yeah, Spider-Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he, sp- he spoke with that deep, like, voice, uh, but it was because yes. it was disguising, uh, like, yes. there. But now with Batman, you're like, why is his voice deep? No, like, it's <laughs> a Batman thing. <laughs> okay. Even if you watch the Lego m- movie, it's, ah, like, also. I feel like Batman is a proper guy's that's him. thing. That, that's as a what girl, I'm saying. I was like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I suppose. From Christian Bale to, like... You know, the, yeah. the deep voice. I, I was like, you have to have the deep voice. I suppose it does make more sense because, like, why don't people recognize people's voices? I mean, like, we do recognize voices. It's deep. No, no, I'm saying it makes sense why he made his voice deep. Yeah, well, imagine. He, it's part of his <laughs> disguise. Be safe. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, wrong guy. I mean, <clears throat> wrong guy. <laughs> okay, I need to stick to the voice from now on. People are going to recognize me. Imagine they should have they should have added a scene where Batman's voice was gone because he was like... <laughs> well, they had the scene where he jumped off the, the ledge and then he like fell and he was like, okay. And then he realized, okay, I need to glide. <laughs> I need to... <laughs> Uh, immediately because he's just jumping I'm like wait whoa wait dude you don't even what are you doing and he's just like jumping over stuff and flying up because now he's trying to do his like disappear act because yes. that's Batman's trait as well Yeah, he's like behind you and he's like he's gone tell me what is it no 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 no, no. no I don't know okay stick around don't go anywhere <laughs> well I wasn't planning and he's gone which they did do in the movie. Yes, exactly. Mm. That, that, that's a Batman <laughs> thing right there. And the first time he does that, he like the cops almost get him. Yeah. We almost across the ledge, like, and then he bangs into the. I'm like, oh. You're like, oh. Uh, Ugh, so hurts. stuff like that, I was just like, okay, this, that's why I say you really got the the Batman Begins yeah. thing of this whole film. But you know, uh, they they they. A lot of the CG they worked. They basically took um, examples from Chicago, which we spoken about. How they drove around Chicago, they they did a lot of like the buildings and stuff like that. But the amazing part is a lot of the the li- the real life, you know, the, the interaction with the city scenes. But they built this huge set. Now the, um, they used basically a hangar, and they say that this hangar was the size of eight of Los Angeles now obviously that's where Hollywood they're eight of their biggest it was a huge hangar but they where was it? Um, in uh, I'm sure it would have been in America I don't think it would have been in no, the UK no it wasn't in America yeah. because they were actually oh it talk- wasn't no well oh. they were talking about the fact that they had to so with the city like they built a, like a real city in there like that I'm talking crazy. about the steam the streets the lights the water the, the st- they even had the cars driving around the within it yeah. yeah and like some of the signs the robots they got them working for real and now I mean you can even think of how the the cinematographer um, would have had to, now he even when he lit he would have had to light this whole city yeah. up like a real city like a so real city, yeah. you got the robots you got the street lights you would have think about the shops how some of the shops have lights advertising lights on them they would have had light this whole city up and not only it's not just one floor type of thing there's like double floors there's this big mess and obviously that was the whole brief of um, of Gotham City is that it's it's this very messy junky busy because 
I mean, that's the whole plot of this of this film is that our our, our guy uh, Liam Neeson they like nope this is a bad place we're gonna yeah. destroy it we're gonna wipe it out yeah type of thing, um but so that that whole city the cars driving the they, they even had a like a short piece of a highway like a three lane highway yeah, it was crazy from one side of the set all the way to to, to the other side they worked with a lot of miniature sets as well. And something that they do is often with miniature sets with movies is to get the concept mm. of now usually I mean you can do concept art yeah but sometimes you get uh, they'll they'll they'll, mini- they'll build a whole miniature set Sets, yeah and apparently they did this with with uh, Christopher Nolan's garage so apparently his garage was just oh full of a goodness. whole lot of the city and the set so they got the concept and then from there obviously they can uh, build and yeah. like I said mention, mentioned uh, before was that it took 10 months for them to prepare this it's crazy man which is huge I mean uh, even in terms of the car sequence chase that I, sp- I mean you can imagine this hangar that they really were doing car chases alright um, but the most amazing part for me was also the cave mm. how they built Batman's cave they they, they would have st- obviously the cave like the actual rocks but they had thousands of wood, uh, not well, thousands of um, like sculptured pieces that were really taken off rock references. So they really had like a rock, and then they put like a paste stuff, whatever, to get its its oh, texture off it. Flip. And then they brought it and they pasted it, and they had thousands of these pieces mm. of sheet that would have gone all around the cave. But here's the cool part: they really like because fl- there's a river that's yeah. flowing through this warehouse, this this hangar. And they really flooded it. Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, we'll channel the water, they really just poured water Pour into water. it. And they flooded it. Like, but also like I think what was cool about that was they had control over it. Because I remember watching the one scene where the Batmobile drives Comes in. in. They're like, all right, kill right. the water. And then you see the, 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 the waterfall water like starts. But it would have been nice because like in between takes, they wouldn't have had... <gasps> Imagine. <gasps> Can you bring over the <laughs> camera for swag? Do Action. You, can someone please turn the water fall off? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Action. All right, guys, lunchtime. Let's go. <laughs> but just the fact that that real, real, like, water flowing through it, I mean, that that is, for me, yeah. when I saw it, I'm like, like they really flood these places. And I think it was the first time they built the Batcave. Yeah. Like, proper, like, proper built. They like, could have they taken it... They could have gone somewhere and found a really nice, good, big... Yeah. Same with the city. All done CG, like set extensions they and stuff. They could have done that. Yeah, but they, they didn't. They could have built it, just gone, found a nice piece of the city, blocked it off. Yeah. I mean, they got the authority, they got the money, but they I said, built this, it. This might have been after the drunk driver yeah. incident. They were like, we can't have any more drunk drivers. Yeah. Guys, build me a city! Yeah. Okay! He <laughs> was probably on edge. He's like, no, to turn. okay, that's it. I'm doing this inside. I can't do this. This is driving me crazy. Yeah, and then... um Last thing is that something that for, for, for me was also pretty cool was that, um, yes, I lost my train of thought right there. <laughs> so music by Hans Zimmer. And James, and James Howard yeah. Newton. They collaborated. That is so That's freaking cool. cool. When I read that, I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I didn't know that. So, yeah, that, 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 this movie. The, Can we the also filming. talk about the Lamborghini? Where was the Lamborghini? Oh, my goodness. I missed right. it. How you oh, said the Lamborghini. Oh, when he rocked up with the with the yes, with the the Lamborghini. Can I just talk about that sequence as well? <laughs> I really thought it was such brilliant storytelling because in that part you get that Batman is this rich snob yeah, type snob, of guy. Yeah. But the way that it ah oh, the way it was done, I was just like, this is so. I was good. just like, oh my word, this Lamborghini is beautiful. Oh, and actually, I paid attention to the music. I was listening to the oh, music. Oh, for real? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I heard in Tenant and in this movie, there's the same, there's there's this certain note that he uses. It's of this very bassy, low, like like notes that I I was just like, "Mm, okay. And Hans Zimmer often works with him on the music as well. So So this time I was was like, wait, listen listen to the music. I actually want to go listen to the soundtrack. I'll join you in that one. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... Mm. That, that has been Batman Begins. That was the beginning of Batman. And we will continue. Yes. And I watched Venom. Ryan, you have to go watch Venom. That's all I'm saying. So we are doing Batman and then we're doing Venom. Does I, anybody re- I am requesting Venom right now. Um, does anybody have an illegal copy of Venom? <laughs> <laughs> wow. no, I'm going to the movie house. No, I'm, you have to. I've organized it already. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah no, that was... Th- go watch Venom, people. Mm. Go watch Venom. We'll be That's talking about saying. it Yeah, really we're soon. definitely doing it soon. But this has been the movie show. Oh, an active film. I'm Sesh. My name, Ryan. We are signing out. Cheerio. Peace out. Cheers. <laughs> Join the Active FM 
show for their catch us on Instagram at Active FM Triple Seven, Twitter and Gab at Active FM, Facebook at Active FM forward slash Triple Seven, as well as YouTube at Active FM and our website at www.activefm.co.za. Don't stop, don't hesitate. Find, follow, and enjoy us on all our different platforms. You don't want to miss out.